Hello, my name is Luis Serrano and this is NLP University from Cohere. In this video, we're going to talk about similarity between words or between sentences and in general between pieces of text. This is really just a measure that it says if you're given two pieces of text and they are very similar, then similarity is a high number. And if they're very different, then the similarity is a small number. For large language models, it is crucial to know when two pieces of text are similar or different. This can be quite a hard problem, but luckily, text embeddings are very helpful for this task. So in this video, I'm going to show you some different ways to tell if two pieces of text are similar or different. This video accompanies the blog post, What is Similarity Between Sentences, which you can find in the Cohere blog. So let's look at a small example with four sentences, and we're going to use movie titles. The movies are You've Got Mail, Rush Hour, Rush Hour 2, and Taken. You can see that the two rush hours are similar movies and you've got mail and taken are different movies. So we need a notion to capture this. So first we'll start with that embeddings. Embeddings are the bread and butter of large language models and what they do is associate a list of numbers or a vector to any piece of text which could be a word, a sentence or an entire essay. If you want to learn more about embeddings check out the comments for a blog post and a video explaining them. So one particular property of embeddings is that each of the numbers in the vector corresponding to a piece of text represents a feature in the text. Sometimes these features are found by the computer and really hard for a human to decipher, but other times they can be interpreted by a human. So for simplicity, let's say that in this embedding, the features can be interpreted as action and comedy. So pretty much a score for each one of them. The first number in the vector represents action and the second one comedy. And the scores for a motion movie are this. You've got mail has zero for action because it has no action and 5 for comedy because it has comedy. Then Rush Hour has 6 and 5 because it has both action and comedy. Rush Hour 2 has 7 and 4 because it also has both action and comedy. And Taken has a lot of action and no comedy so it has a high score for action and a low one for comedy. Now since there are two entries per movie we can actually plot them in the plane where the horizontal coordinate represents action and the vertical one comedy. So you've got this point over here at 0, 5 which is you've got mail, you've got rush hour over here at 6.5, then you've got rush hour 2 at 7.4, and then you got taken at 7.0. And notice one thing, and is that similar movies are close in this embedding and different movies are far. For example, you've got mail and taken are quite far away because they're different movies, and rush hour and rush hour 2 are close to each other because they are similar movies. Visualizing an embedding geometrically is very useful as it helps see distances like this. This embedding has two entry entries per sentence, which means that we can plot it in the plane. When an embedding has thousands of entries per sentence, which is the case normally, it gets hard to visualize, but you can imagine points in a very high dimensional space being close to each other or far away, and that represents sentences that are similar or different. But we need a notion of similarity, namely a number that is high when the sentences are similar and small when they're very different. The first notion we're going to see is dot product. So let's take a look at the embeddings again. Notice that similar movies have similar scores in each column, and we're going to exploit that. So first, let's look at the pair of different movies on the left. If we multiply the action values and the comedy values and add them, that's the dot product. And for the left pair, we get a very small number. We get zero because they don't match in either comedy or action. In other words, when the action is high for one, it's low for the other one, and vice versa. So their products are very small. However, for the second one, we get a large number. We're going to get 62. And the reason for this is that this time, the high scores for action match and the high scores for comedy match. Therefore, we get a high dot product or a high similarity for the ones in the right and a low one for the ones in the left. Now, dot product is a very useful notion of similarity, but let me show you another one that is pretty useful too. This one is called cosine distance, and as its name hints, somewhere there is the cosine of an angle. So let's look at the embeddings geometrically again. Now let's take an angle between the two rays formed by the origin and each of the movies or the sentences. So for the pair in the left, it's this one, and for the pair in the right, it's this one. So between you've got male and taken, we have an angle of 90 degrees, whereas for the other two, rush hour and rush hour two, we have a much smaller angle, it's actually 11.31. Now let's take the cosine of the angle. So if we take cosine of 90 for the one in the left, that's zero, so the similarity is zero. For the two in the right, the cosine is much higher, it's 0 0.98, so the similarity is 0 0.98. Now one pro of the cosine similarity is that it's always between 
minus 1 and 1. So in this way, the largest similarity two sentences can have is 1, which is actually when we take the sentence and itself. So let's look at application for similarity now. It's in search. So take a look at these 10 sentences and say that we have a question, which is this one over here. What color is the sky? And a good search model would find that the answer is this one. The sky is blue. So we're going to find it using similarity. First, let's make a table with all the similarities between all these sentences. The table's over here and the scaling is from 0 to 1. This is cosine similarity. As you can see, every element in the diagonal is a 1 because the similarity between a sentence and itself is always 1. And some of these numbers are large, around 0 0.7, and the rest are very small. And if you look carefully, the large numbers correspond to the similarity between each question and its corresponding answer. So, for example, let's look at the similarity between the, what color is the sky and the sky is blue. This similarity is 0 0.7, implying that these two sentences are quite similar. In contrast, let's look at the similarity between what color is the sky and an apple is a fruit. That one is a small number close to zero, implying that these two sentences are very dissimilar. So when we compare them, and we can actually do that between every sentence and what color is the sky, we see that the most similar sentence other than itself is the answer, which is the sky is blue. So we've made a very small searching model using similarity. Obviously, there's a lot more to search models than this, but this is just to give you an idea of how the first step of a search model can be a similarity search. So that's it. I hope you enjoy learning about similarity between text, and please stay tuned for other videos of NLP University.